Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good evening, family. Did you have a, I hope you had a good meal in there, and we are ready for the second part of our night. So I'm going to go through the announcements really quick. So Risa, if you can track with me, just going to do this fast. This Sunday, we are going to have baptisms during the service, during the Sunday service, which is going to be just so awesome. It'll be a wonderful to celebrate. It's also going to be um, International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church, so we're going to have a little bit of a focus on that during our Sunday service time. Um, so that's what's unique for this Sunday. Our regular stuff I'm going to run through real fast. Um, on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Miles has his Bible study on the Gospel of John. On Tuesday mornings, the women are meeting here going through uh, by the, by the stories of women in the Bible. That's from uh, 10 to noon, I believe. Tuesday evenings, we have our youth group meeting. Wednesdays, we have Awana and um, corporate prayer, and I think I covered the basis. So if you have questions about any more of those, talk to just anyone who goes here. Or come find me if, if somebody doesn't know, and um, we can get you the details on that. So let's go ahead and get started. Father God, thank you. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, God, that we gather in your son Jesus' name tonight. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, that you dwell within us, Holy Spirit. We ask that you would have full sway tonight, that you would be our teacher, that you would be honored, Jesus Christ, that you would be revealed, that we would draw closer to you and know you. Help us, help us lift our souls up to you and worship you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name. All right. It is time to praise the Lord. Are you guys excited? Oh, come on, we can do better than that because we serve a God who is mighty. And sometimes we have to do a sacrificial praise. And I'm sure some of you out there are going through some things. And to praise the Lord tonight, might be a sacrifice. So I'm going to ask you to stand up and get ready. To be, um, and I wanted to ask, do you, does anyone know the song, Every Praise? Every Praise is to Our God. Okay, well then, we are going to be learning a new song together tonight because it's new for some of the musicians as well. But it's a song to give adoration, acclamation to our Father in Heaven because every praise is deserving to him, all right? Okay, one, two, three, four. All right, we're gonna do that again. <laughs> one, two, three, four. All right, yes, praise him. Every praise. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Now we're going to take it up, all right? Modulate. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise. 
Every praise is to our God. Let's do it again. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. All right, God my Savior. God my Savior. God my healer. God my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God my Savior. God my Savior. God my healer. God my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. All right, that was a little rough this time, but next time we're going to know the song a little better, right? We're going to praise the Lord no matter what. <laughs> okay. What's that? Oh, hallelujah. Okay. Keep praising with your voice. That's what he wants. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise the Lord God Almighty who reigns. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Lord. And this next song is I Raise a Hallelujah, too, okay? So you guys, keep praising the Lord, you know? Look up to him. He is our hope and our future, and he desires to have our praise. And the voices of praise, our hands and our instruments, is, a, uh, is such music to his ears. Yep. Yep, come on, clap your hands. Come on. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I'll raise a hallelujah. My weapon is the melody. I'll raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. All right, sing it now. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're, you're gonna, gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive i'll raise a hallelujah come on with everything with everything inside of me. Woo. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I'll raise a hallelujah. Fear has lost its hold. Fear, you lost your hold on me. Woo. What are we going to do? I'm going to sing in 
the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Hallelujah. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Sing a little louder. 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 Oh, sing a little louder. Sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Ooh. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. My weapon is a melody. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. turn it over to our lovely Amanda. All right, everyone, please pray with me to our Lord. Thank you, God, for um, just allowing us to all be here to worship you. We would not be here without you. It doesn't matter if we have a building or instruments or lights. Um, we are here to praise you and to worship you and to learn from your word and to be strengthened as a body in your name, Jesus. So, God, I just pray that you would speak through Paul tonight and that you would soften every heart here so that we could be open to your word, open to repentance and to change, and to um, just fully lead a life that glorifies you. Thank you, God, for all that you're doing, and I pray that everyone here would um, feel you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord has called us higher, and we do have a higher calling in Christ Jesus, and we have to remind ourselves of that on a daily basis, that he has called us to be children, sons of God, who honor him in all that we do. And Amy's going to be singing the song called Me Higher, so um, just listen and join in if you can. Yes, praise the Lord.
I could hold on. I could hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. And I could be safe, oh, I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home, never let these walls down. But you have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you lead me, Lord. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you lead me, Lord. You could hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. And I could be safe, oh, I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home, never let these walls down. But you have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you lead me, Lord, you lead me. And I will be yours, Lord, I will be yours for all my life. I will be yours, Lord. I will be yours for all my life. I will be yours, oh. I will be yours for all my life. So let your mercy. Oh, I will be yours, Lord. I will be yours for all my life. So let your mercy. Light the path before me Cause you have called me higher You have called me deeper And I'll go where you will lead me, Lord You have called me higher You have called me deeper And I'll go where you will lead me, Lord You have called me higher You voice is cracking. I want you guys to know that tonight is a sacrifice of praise for me. So um, just continue to keep me in prayer, but I'm going to keep on praising, right? Because during the sacrifice is when he is doing that work against the enemy, because we are in a battle and Jesus will never fail. He, we're, he's not going to lose the battle. All right. So we're going to turn it over to Pastor Paul. Yeah. Yes. Praise him, family. Praise him. Praise the holy name of Jesus. Hey, let's give it up for these guys, man. And so I just want to throw it out there, family. Um, if you all got a little whoop-de-whoop, -whoop, you know, bra -patch, come see Belinda. Oh, yeah, you're quiet now, aren't you? Yeah, you're quiet now. I'll put you out there, folks. So we are always looking... For musical talent, we're looking for servants of the Most High, 
and kids are dismissed, so get to stepping, okay? Let's all pray for Christian. He going to need it. There's a bazillion kids here tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the family. I am so blessed to have you guys here. We at this church of the Lord Jesus Christ are praising, praising the God of all wonders. Amen. Amen. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping continuously, family, that every single one of you that come in to the house of God and the family of God, that you guys experience God's true love, his amazing, unfailing love. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay. So another way that we experience that amazing love is through that amazing food that the, that the girls cook up. And the guys, come on. Yeah, so how'd you guys like the gringo enchiladas tonight? Okay, all right, gringo enchiladas. Hey, gringo enchiladas are better than some of my Mexican enchiladas. I'm gonna put it out there, okay? Plus, my wife is sitting right in front of me with a Bible. Get ready to bust me if I say the wrong thing. I so appreciate food, fun, and fellowship family. I really think, now listen to me. I really think that this family has created an environment of warmth, of acceptance, of love, of Jesus. Can I get one? Amen. Amen, you guys. And see, I don't know about you guys, but I've been to churches. I've been to churches all over, you know. And I am going to brag on this one. I'm going to brag on you guys because, see, I'm not just the church. It's not this building. But it's all of us who come together and we smile and we laugh, and, and we pray together, we worship together. Isn't that what church is all about, family? That was weak. Isn't that what church is all about, family? Come on. So, so we're on Zoom, Zoom, or, or YouTube. I want to send a shout out uh, to you, Angel, who's in Marshall Hospital watching us with all the nursing staff. We love you and we miss you here tonight, Angel, but we just want you to know Jesus loves you. We love you. We're going, we're going to get at you the rest of this week and, and pray with you on the phone like we did today. And we just want you to know that it's the next best thing to being here by being on, on YouTube and watching us in the comfort of your little private room there. Uh, I also want to send a shout out to someone that you guys don't really know a whole lot about. And before I go any further, we got a sister. Go ahead, Julie. Okay, so scratch that, uh, Angel. If you're at home, I correct myself. Julie just said you're at home, so you're probably watching us from home. But if any Marshall staff is watching us, God bless you guys for what you do. Amen. Amen. And another sister I want to shout, uh, send a shout out to is Linda. Linda, I can't pronounce her last name, but she is Carolyn and Tim's mom who is always here. That sister is way over in Citrus Heights. And she is, this is her church. She got saved in this church. She got baptized in this church. She serves in this church. And she is our official Academy Award winning designated actress. <laughs> oh, oh, it's true. But what I mean by that, and she knows because she's laughing right now. I'll get a call later on tonight. Um, She's helping us put together the wonderful Christmas play that we are going to be doing this season. And, and for that, I'm grateful. Just like you guys, she's using her time, her talent, and her treasure to make this more a warm, 
body of believers that are alive and well and praising the name of Jesus. Can I get one? Amen. Thank you. Let's get to the word. So, tonight we want to begin a new biblical series on holiday holiness. Holiday holiness. In order to avoid the worldly holiday madness, the holiday madness that takes place each year. I thought that a message like this will help us all out. Can I get an amen? Seriously. Okay. How many of you know that there is madness going on all around us on the highways, the byways? There's shootouts on airplanes. Oh, yeah. They got U.S. Marshals on, on aircrafts now because of that. People just go... And, and, and they, have to, they have to restrain them. The holidays, family, the holidays. So let's start by researching a few statistics from the Bureau of Crime Statistics, Tullamore Life Statistics, Weave, Women Escaping a Violent Environment, Meave, Men Escaping a Violent Environment, etc., on the holiday madness around the world and our country. So, first of all, I want you guys to know, just like Janelle, thank you, Janelle and, and Risa, 14 years old, uh, it, domestic violence reports are the highest during the holiday seasons. Were you guys aware of that? Yeah. Most people are knowing that domestic violence reports are the highest during the holiday seasons. Number two, DUI and drug-related deaths and accidents are at their highest during the holiday seasons. Number three, suicide and homicides are at their highest levels during the holiday seasons. Number four, Divorce and family separations are at their highest numbers during the holiday seasons. But wait, there's more. Number five, financial debt and credit card loans are at their highest level during the holiday seasons. Need I go any further in my research to find what we are headed into in the next few weeks and fastly approaching with our holidays coming up. It's plain as day. People, all of, a lot of you guys are going, oh yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm knowing it. Well, let me just ask you <clears throat> a serious question, family. How many of us are going to fall victim into one of these categories this year. How many of us will fall into one of these categories this year? Wow. After those statistics, how many of you are excited to get to the holidays? Well, let me tell you something. This is a new, a good news church. This is a church that brings good news, good tidings. And so tonight, you guys, let's examine this holiday season from the Holy One's perspective and see how Jesus wants us to live them out. Can I get one? Amen. I'm, I mean this because, look, in and of ourselves, it's my guess that every single one of us has fallen victim to one of those five categories. Financial, dandruff, I can't tell you, I mean, back in the days, if I would have got caught for every time I was drinking and driving, I, would, I wouldn't be here, I, I don't think. Um, for, for all the credit, debt, for all of the family fights and feuds and all of that, Am I the only one? Okay, there's a few. Okay, come on, keep it real, family. Yeah, because you know what? That, that's what it's all about, you guys. It's about being reminded 
how to keep holy during these holidays. So I'm glad you guys asked the question, what does holy mean, Pastor Paul? What does holy mean? Well, let me tell you what the Greek word for holy means. Holy. <laughs> Set apart. Set apart. Holy. Was Jesus set apart for the Father's business? Were the disciples set apart and holy for the kingdom work? If you're born again and you know the Holy One, and you are in his holy presence here tonight, guess what? God, the Holy Father, wants to set us apart for these holidays and make a difference on the hilltop. We, we the light, want to shine in the darkness during these holiday uh, uh, seasons, you guys. And we have two major holidays coming up. And in order for us as a church, as believers, we have to encourage one another to get the mindset, hey, hold up, man. I want to be holy during the, this season. I don't want to do what I've done in the seasons past. I want to be set apart for these holidays to do what is glorifying to God what is a blessing to my family, what is a blessing to my kids, and to my community. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, with that in mind, turn with me to the book of Matthew. That is the first book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay, if you don't know where Matthew is... Look to the person next to you and say, can you help me find Matthew? Okay, Jackie said, I got to get a Bible first. Okay, if you don't have a Bible, isn't that beautiful? No excuses, man. Everybody walks away knowing that they've read the word of God and not Pastor Paul's words. And I'm grateful for that. So. I'm going to read these, uh, these verses, and then I'm going to break them down. So Jesus was going through all the cities and the villages, teaching, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples that were with him, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Family, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to ask you to focus on the word of God. I want you to read verse 35, 36, 37, and 38 right now in the privacy of your own little space with God. And I'm going to ask you to ask the Holy Spirit to bring something to your mind tonight. As you're reading these verses, Holy Spirit, open our spiritual eyes, our spiritual ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to this church. Holy Spirit, indeed, this is your time. You are our teacher. You are our God. And tonight we humbly ask you as we delve into your word for you to teach us what we can't teach ourselves. 
and for you to show us what we can't on the natural see ourselves. And so be glorified as we commit to setting ourselves apart and being holy during these holiday seasons as we look at you, Lord Jesus, in your written word that talks about when you were walking on earth and the things that you saw, the things you felt, the things you told us to do. And so be honored as we praise you and thank you for being, being here with us and allow it, allowing us to be in your presence. For we pray this in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. okay, so point number one, guys. In verse 35, it says Jesus was going through all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. How many of you are aware, listen to me family, that Jesus is walking and talking and moving and grooving in the streets of Pollock Pines El Dorado County on this hilltop through you and I. Are you guys aware of that? It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith alone in the one who loved me and gave himself for me. We are royal ambassadors. We are appointed with the ministry of reconciling the world back to him. Any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I'm asking you guys tonight, in the privacy of your own relationship with the Holy God, you as an individual, you as an individual, every single one of you as individuals, I want you guys to put on the mind of Christ and say, Lord Jesus, I'm reading about you walking through the villages back in your days. We desire as your church for you to walk in our villages, our streets, our cities, our hilltop. Therefore, we set ourselves apart for you to do it in us, through us, and around us. How many of you are willing to commit to letting the Lord Jesus go through the cities and villages? How many of you still believe, family, that God is in the business of healing people all the time. How many of you are believing tonight that Jesus Christ still desires to remove sickness and sin from not only our lives, but the lives of our community and all the sin-sick people that are all around this hilltop? Folks, he did not give us his written word so that we could just think of it as something that just happened way back in first century Christianity, and it's obsolete. It's not going to happen now. It was back in those days. No! Folks, you and I are called to be a light in the darkness. And in this holiday season... How many of you know, if not you yourself, that depression is hitting real heavy right now? I don't know about you guys, but I don't have $1,000 to go buy everybody gifts that I would like to buy. Actually, I don't want to even buy gifts. Um, I want to give people Jesus this season. I want to give people Love this season. But you guys, listen to me. We're adults. We have little kids that just look forward to little zoom zooms and wham wham. It is what it is. 
listen. Oh, boy, I got a good response out of that, Lord. Look in our nurseries and watch the little kids play. And the little girls are doing this. Oh, your hair's pretty. I like it. Give me your shirt. Oh, don't let me have your blouse. The little boys are. True or false? All we're wanting to do is bless our kids and just make them happy and let them be kids. You know, I, I, I know Jesus just gets a smile on his face when kids are kids and, and we love on kids as he loves on us. Can I get an amen? amen? So point number one, in the next few weeks, we are going to ask Jesus to teach about the holy kingdom of God and to heal every sin sick sinner and to deliver and to heal people in our church, as I was talking earlier, and in our community. How many of you would desire the greatest gift that we could offer is number one, salvation. Amen? For a sin sick sinner to be born again and to never have to face the wrath of God, never have to walk in a sinful world alone, but to be accompanied by the God of all creation, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who wants to give us eternal life. Don't you want it this, this season for, for our community? How many family members do you want it for? Quite a bit, huh? Amen? Amen. So in verse 35, let's just get that mindset as point number one. In verse 36, we are going to move forward with the holy compassion of Jesus and create an environment for people to come and experience the love of our most holy God here in this church, in our homes, and in our communities. Can I get a commitment from somebody? Amen. 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 In verse 37, we are going to pray, listen to me, we are going to pray and invite laborers to invite the soul harvest into the presence of the Holy One, Jesus. Here's what I mean. I want you to look at the person next to you and say, can I invite you to be holy and set apart? For these holiday seasons. There he is. Yes. Yes. I see that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Landon's looking at John and John's going like this. Okay. John's saying, I'm so sick. I'll just take any blessing from God right now. Okay. Can we do that, Emily? Okay. Emily, I love you. It's, I'm going to pray for you with that dude right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nate. I got you, bro. I got you. You will. I'm not even going to invite you. I'm going to go get you. You know how we do it. You know how we do it. So we're going to invite people to go out because in verse 7 he said, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into the field. Okay? You guys, we're the laborers. The harvest is all around us starting in our home. We're going to invite people on this hilltop to get busy about the kingdom. Amen? Amen? Verse 38. We are going to prepare for a holy harvest celebration during Thanksgiving and Christmas. Pastor Paul, what do you mean we're, we're going to prepare for a holy harvest during Thanksgiving and Christmas? I'm going to tell you in a minute. I'm going to tell you in a minute. But right now what I'm going to tell you is the whole purpose for keeping holy in the holiday season this year is because of its, oh yeah, I praise him. Imagine our, our, our hilltop looking like that, guys. Our church is getting there. Our church is getting there. You guys look like that. Whoa, hey, yes. But let me tell you the scripture that backs up why to be holy. Turn with me to 1 Peter 
chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. It's in the New Testament. It's after James, which is after Hebrews. And 1 Peter is that, 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 that book right there. And it's chapter 1 and it's verses 15 and 16. Listen to what the scriptures say. Peter is saying, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in some of your behavior. Whenever you feel like it. Whenever you're at church. Okay, that's not what it says, right? In all your behavior. Let me tell you why. Stop right there. I don't want anybody walking out of Pollock Pines Community Church saying, Pastor Paul said we just have to be holy this season. We can't wait till New Year's, man, because we're going to go back to being knuckleheads. Don't you do that to me. I'll find you. I'll find you. I'm just zeroing in on the importance of the holiness of these holiday seasons that are coming, that are fastly approaching, you guys. How many of you guys can believe we're already in November, fastly approaching gobble, gobble, gobble day? Uh, okay, I'm just going to insert this. If you want to fly like an eagle, quit gobbling with a bunch of turkeys. Adrian likes that. She said, I'm going to take that one home with me. I like that. I like that. Verse 16. Because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And the Holy Spirit, man, has really impressed this upon my heart because I was one of those knuckleheads during the holiday seasons, man. Uh, you too, brother? Okay, good. Well, you ain't going to be this season, right? Okay, good. We're going to watch you. Uh, and listen, guys, this season I have committed to be different, okay? I don't want to be a part of the problem anymore. I want to be a part of the solution. Philip, thank you, man. It's been a while. By the way, remind me to get some pizza over at uh, uh, Papa, uh, where is it again? Yeah, there you go. Thank you, brother. Good to see you here tonight. Be holy. So listen, guys, he's the one that accepted Christ and, and young youngster, man. He, he got Jesus right in here, man. Yeah, yeah. That's why people keep coming here, because Jesus is on the main line. Tell them what you want. If you want salvation, tell them what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell them what you want. Why don't you call them up and tell them what you want? Come on, man. I'll stick to preaching. I'll stick to preaching. I'll let Belinda do what she do. Okay? But I just had to throw it. I was feeling it. I was feeling it. Thank you, Philip. You motivated me. So here's the whole purpose for being holy during the holidays. We're commanded to. We're told to. We should do it year-round, 24-7. But I just want to put emphasis on the days to come. So here's what looks, here's what that looks like in action. Okay. First of all, I need you guys to help me out by going to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Folks, we're talking, we're talking holy scriptures here. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. So this is what God is telling us. Therefore, I urge you, put your name right there on brethren. Don't, don't say brethren. Therefore, I urge you, Pastor Paul, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And Pastor Paul, do not be conformed to this world on the hilltop in Pollock Pines, anywhere in El Dorado County, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. How many of you guys are willing to claim and live out those verses? Amen. Amen. So this is what the verses look like lived out 
in the days to come. Follow me, family. Hurry up, David. Get in here. Ah, uh, this is what... David, I'm not going to go to my points until you get in here. Thank you, David. I love you. Don't you feel love when I, when I call you out like that, brother? I do. He, he said, I do. Thank you. Listen, guys. Listen. He knows I love him today. I saw him earlier uh, this week. Anyways, number one. Thanksgiving, listen, please listen to me. This is the application. Thanksgiving Day will be at the Pollock Pines Community Church and celebrated like a good old fashioned home cook eaten with family and friends in a safe and holy environment. We're working hard, family. We're working hard transforming this building into a living room, a family room, a food room, a fun room, a filling room, a food room, a holy room, a Jesus room, a your room, a your house, and you all being here. And here's why. This Thanksgiving, my family way out there. They're gone. They're, they're, besides that, even if they lived here locally, I wouldn't go over there. Okay? I am not trying to get drunk, get loaded, smoke dope, get in a fight, have gunshots. I'm not. That's my family. You guys know what I'm talking about. Quit. Repent. Give your lives to Jesus. Listen, how many of you guys don't have families and are really not looking forward to waking up on Thanksgiving and not knowing what you're going to cook, who you're going to be around, guess what? Problem solved. You are all cordially invited to come with the appetite. I'm going to extend it. You guys could have 10 servings apiece. Okay. Still can't hurt yourself, but you guys, here's the mindset. Apart from holy, here's the mindset. Get all you can, can all you get, and sit on the lid. You going to take that one too? Listen, family, we're going to have a Thanksgiving celebration where no worldly madness is going to take place here. All you, all you fathers that cook turkeys, all you mothers that have to put up with those turkeys, let me tell you something. In this place, it is going to be the most loving, accepting family atmosphere that you guys will never forget. Okay, that was weak. Come on, a little bit over here. Can I get you? Amen, brother. God bless America. No! Yay, Jesus! Woo! Turkey at PPCC! Pollock Pines in the house! We're going to grub! What? Okay, brother, you need to slow your roll, man, because you're already wanting the time. What time do you want it? Where, what time do you want it? All day, okay. I was hoping he was going to say all day, okay? All you guys that want it at that time, you better show up an hour earlier. How's that? What do you guys think? Maybe noon, 3 o'clock? What, what, what's a good time? How, okay, well, cut it. How many in favor of starting it and kicking it off at 3 o'clock? Say aye. How many are in favor of starting it at noon? Okay, y'all have outvoted. Let me give you JR's house address. Okay, we're going to do it at JR's house. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You is getting holy on us, aren't you? Woo, brother. 
You guys, by next week, we're going to have the time and more specificity. Right now, we just wanted to get everybody hooting and hollering about it. And, and, and next week, we're going to have more specifics. But if you have family and you already have a Thanksgiving, but you guys want to break away from your family and just come in here and get a dessert, guess what? Y'all's welcome. Y'all's welcome. Y'all's welcome. Thank you. He's got Number two, we are having two Christmas plays depicting a true home for the holidays atmosphere on Friday the 17th and then part two, the grand finale, three days later or two days later, December 19th on our Sunday service. How many of you could be here on both services? How many of you could be here for at least one? Okay, thank you. And bring the dog. Bring the dog. So mark your calendars the 17th of December and December 19th. That's next month. I'll get into detail later on that. But number three, we are having a home for the holidays Christmas family gathering here at PP. CC, Paul Clans Community Church, on Saturday, December 20, is it, is Christmas the 24th or 25th? 25th. It's the 25th. On the 25th, I, I don't know why I put the 24th, uh, on the 25th, Christmas Day, for all of us that are looking for a place to celebrate Christmas with family and friends and all the good food, fun, and fellowship. So mark your calendars and tell people, we're going to have Thanksgiving here as a family, and we're going to have Christmas here as a family. What we're going to do is we're going to buy a bunch of toys for the kids, the kids, kids, children, minors. And for the adults, we're going to, what do you call those again, honey? White elephant. White elephant. Why, why they got to pick on white elephants? Why, I, okay, not from. Uh, there's no elefantes blancos in Mexico gifts, okay? White elephant gifts, you guys. And we're going to have it in there. And then on Thanksgiving, we're going to have a movie, okay? It's not going to be the football game, Joe. Okay, no, Joe. Okay, it's not going to be the Thanksgiving football game. We're going to have a movie. We're going to have hot chocolate on Christmas. We're going to have Christmas caroling. We're going to have testimonies. You guys, we're going to have so much fun. Why? Because we's a family. We's a church. Don't think that... Pastor Jim and our elders and Pastor Paul are going to get up here and promote all this holiness during the holidays and not provide a holy en environment, atmosphere. We got to have application. Look at these ladies. Boy, they're going to be first in line here. I like it. And so Jesus walked the villages, family. Jesus saw people like sheep without a shepherd. The shepherd is here. His name is Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he's still offering healing. He's offering deliverance. He's offering salvation. And at this church, you guys, you're going to get all that. You're going to get people who love God and love you. That's what your church here is all about. Okay? So listen to me. Please prepare to keep holy during the holidays. 
And as the days quickly approach, come up to Pastor Jim on Sunday. I want you guys here on Sunday. And go to the elders and go to the sisters and talk to them about what you would like to bring to the table. And I'm not saying money. I'm not saying gifts. I'm just what would you like to make it home for you? You guys could bring pictures of your family. I kid you not. Listen to me, family. If you're missing a family member, bring a portrait of that, of that loved one and put it on the table so they could have Christmas and Thanksgiving with us. Okay, I don't know where that came from, but somebody needed it. Okay? But is that good, Christopher? Bring your family in portraits. Be holy, for I am holy, keeping holy in the holidays. Can I get an amen? amen? So now, here's something else that's really fun and exciting. How many of you are going to be here Sunday to witness multiple people right here getting baptized? How many of you have been believers, but you haven't gotten baptized and feel like you want to be baptized this Sunday. Okay, Vicente. Okay, any of you guys that are wanting to be added to the list for believer's baptism, come see me after the service, but we are going to celebrate changed lives, dying to their old self, raised to walk in newness of life. And let me tell you how powerful Jesus is. Would you guys believe me if I told you that a married couple from Phoenix, Arizona is flying in tomorrow to get baptized here at this church, flying back Sunday afternoon to be to work in Phoenix, Arizona on Monday. Who does that? Jesus! Aren't you guys excited? We all have people from... Phoenix, Arizona, here. Whole families getting baptized. Youngsters getting baptized. People in recovery getting baptized. People who just came to know Jesus getting baptized. We ain't going to be waiting. Okay, well, wait. Let us pass this through the committee. Committee? Well, we got to wait a year to do a background check on you. Who's you? Jesus said, I'm washed in the blood. He says, make disciples, baptize, and teach. How many of you guys are with the Jesus part of it? Okay, well, you're in the right place. You're in the right church, and that's what's going to take place. Let's all stand. As I ask the prayer team to come down, and the worship team, y'all just stand just going to ask you guys to close your eyes right now and bow your head and thank the Holy Spirit for his holy word. I'm going to ask the prayer team to come on down here to receive people who just want somebody to pray for them. You know, tonight a message isn't a message unless it's followed up with the messenger, and that's the Holy Spirit. And I don't know where you're at tonight, folks. I don't know where you're at in your walk with Jesus. But there's three things that we're asking tonight. If you want to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today could be the day of salvation. If you've been walking with Jesus and you've been slipping and tripping and going your own way and want to come back, Tonight is the night of restoration. And for those of you who the Holy Spirit has been calling you to step up to the plate and start being a part of the church, come down and tell one of these prayer warriors, one of these people that are here to pray with you, you want to do something in the church. If you want Jesus, just let us know you want Jesus. If you want to rededicate your life, let us know. 
And in general, I just want you to bow with me and let me pray for you and your family needs in Jesus' name. And as I'm praying, if you want to walk and come down the aisle, feel free to. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for what you've done tonight. Thank you so much for moving in the lives of so many people here tonight. Thank you, Father, that we could follow your holy example. And Lord, I know there are people that are watching on YouTube that are hurting. There are people in this sanctuary tonight standing on holy ground, crying out to you, Lord Jesus, for whatever is happening in their life these days. Holy Spirit, move in a mighty way as you touch the lives of people that are calling upon you, your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness. For those who are wanting you in their life, Lord Jesus, they're saying enough is enough. I'm tired of living a sinful, wicked, self-directed life. And I want to agree with you that sin is sin. And you, Lord Jesus, are the Savior of the world. God the Son, who wants to come into my life and make me new. Come in tonight, Lord Jesus, and make me a new creation. That I could be set apart during the holidays and forevermore to live holy like you are holy. And if you're calling one tonight, Father, to step up, quit being a bump on the log, and you want to use them in your church, in your family, may they respond tonight, Lord Jesus, to glorify you and be a part of an awesome family here on the hilltop. So we pray this all in Jesus' name. And God's people said, amen. amen. Let's give them a clap offering, family. <laughs> amen. Again, God bless you guys. Women, listen to me. On Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock, women have the most powerful Bible study on women of the Bible. And in the evening, youth with Ryan is kicking off at 6 o'clock as well. Wednesday, we have corporate prayer. Thursdays, we have choir practice. You guys, here's what I'm saying. At Pollock Pines Community Church, we have a service that will meet your needs where you're at. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Uh, one, more, one more family. Hang on. Oh, listen, how many of you, just, just out of faith, raise your hand if you think you're musically talented. One, two, three. At 5 o'clock, from 5 to 7 on Tuesday nights, come and show us what you're all about. Come show us. In Jesus' name, God bless you guys. They're still praying up here. You can still come up for prayer. We're here. God bless you guys.